make sure that you're speaking into it so we can hear you. Hello. Yeah, perfect. Hello. Perfect. But okay. if you want, you can move that closer to you so you don't have to bend over for it. Yep. The, okay. All right. Thank you. And just to clarify, it's Lou Tom Co. Correct. All right. I didn't get it right the first time. <laughs> and you are Marvin Leaders. I am Marvin Leaders. Okay. Go ahead and raise your right hand. Oh. Okay. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you are about to provide is true and accurate? Yes. All right. Thank you. So let them get this distributed. We'll be right with you. The same Marvin leaders who uh, who filed pre-filed testimony and exhibits in this matter. Yes. Do you have any corrections to your testimony? Uh, no, I don't believe I do. Okay. If asked the same questions here today, would you provide substantially the same answers as uh, your yes. testimony? Okay. Thank you. Would you like to move admission of your pre-filed testimony and exhibits? So not this one, the ones that are already filed. Yes. All right. Is there objections? Seeing none, the board will admit and give the weight due. Now, Mr. Leaders, would you like to walk us through your hearing exhibit that you've just distributed before we determine if it's admitted or not? Okay. The exhibit... Uh with the somewhat star-shaped or cross-shaped uh, outline to the right-hand side of it is our farms in Wright County, Iowa. In the upper right-hand corner, you see this, the uh, town of Clarion. Okay. Okay. And then down here, lower, you see, uh, we refer this, uh, these farms, uh, my brother and I are now the fourth generation ownership of this land. It started in the early 1890s with my great-grandfather coming to Wright County from Illinois and uh, actually started on the farm that's just lower than uh, what we call farm number one. And the Summit Pipeline would be crossing four and three and just touched the corner of the southwest corner of number one okay so uh, just for our, for our record you're you're talking about the dayton township north north plat map and you're talking yeah, about they, the, this was a, a dayton township map that okay. i i took made, made a copy of uh and, and your properties are the one labeled one two three four Correct. Perfect. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. And the next two pages of your okay. exhibit? Uh, what was my point? Okay. This we refer to as farm number three, and this one is farm number two. And then we will just barely touch the southwest. Number one is directly east 
and this is number one, and the pipeline would just touch the lower corner here. Okay, we are talking about page two um, with the topographical lines, the, the, the gradient lines, correct? The map? We're just clarifying. Yeah, we just have to describe it in the record. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. This is a map that shows elevation, yep. elevation lines okay. and uh, the lines. All right, that's page two. And then the final page, can you describe that? Page three Tell us what is, we're looking at. is farm number four, mm -hmm. and that is uh, maps of new tile that was put in in the fall of uh, 2014, and uh, there also was tile that was additional tile put on this farm about uh, half as much more in the spring of 2015. Okay. And are you wanting to admit these as a hearing exhibit? Yes, if oh. they possibly can be, yes. Okay. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, the board will admit as Lutom Co. Incorporated Hearing Exhibit 1. Okay. Uh, so... We've been through this with a few of the others, uh, but the board will now uh, ask the parties to conduct their cross-examination so the parties have an opportunity to ask questions of your direct testimony that was pre-filed. Uh, once the parties finish, the board may have questions for you, uh, if it has any, and then when the board is done, uh, or when the cross-examination is done, you'll be allowed to clarify your answers to any of the questions that the parties asked you. So this is not the time for new testimony. This is the time for all of us to clarify and understand everything that you have filed prior to this day. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Great. Mr. Taylor, it looks like you've got your placard up first. Thank you. Um, Mr. Leaders, let's start with uh, the exhibit that you just uh, offered into evidence. And on page one, you had your uh, parcels one, two, three, and four outlined in in dark. Uh, uh, can you take your uh, the pointer there and uh, kind of indicate where uh, the summit pipeline would go through those properties? No, I got to get it a little bit farther. I don't want to shine this. Okay, it would come. I guess it would be feeding from the east to the west, as right. I understand it. Right. And it would come across here and just touch this corner of number one, and then diagonally work across uh, to about here on leaving number three, going on to number four and then would go come out uh, roughly about that point. Okay. So just to describe it in, in, in words, it would go uh, east to west horizontally across the very southern part of parcel one and then start um, moving diagonally sort of to the northwest through parcels three and four? Correct. In your uh, written testimony, my notes indicate that you had some concerns about the drain tile on your property. And, in fact, page three of um, your hearing exhibit one, um, the top uh, shows the drain tile. Can you give us a, a more accurate uh, description of where the drain tile is and um, how old some of it might be? Okay. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to run this. Would you uh, switch over to the parcel to the east of this on number, what we call number three? Oh, I guess I'm.
Yeah. I wonder if the KMZ map might be more um, descriptive. Drainage flow of these properties are basically from across here down onto number three and then curves around here and it is a 30 inch county tile as it leaves our farm and then becomes a 32 in the next farm to the south. Okay. This takes drainage from about a mile north here. Uh, lateral um, county mains go east and goes over here several miles. Okay. The, we call them county tiles because they were individual drainage districts. But in Wright County, the, all the drainage districts have been... Uh, consolidated in the county commissioners or the officers and uh, rather than individual elected boards. So we refer to them as a county tile. This tile is uh, totally uh, undersized at this time and uh, an area here always blew out from pressure and then uh, the county put a inlet a uh, inlet in that area so mr leaders can when you're pointing to the map can you describe it with words as well so that later when we're looking at the record and we're reading this we know you know the the blowout occurred you know, we can look at it on the map. We won't be able to see. Here. Okay. Does that make sense? It would describe it as the north central, or how would you want this? Perfect. Okay. And this county tile comes up into this area and then goes on up into number four. And so this is our outlets here. Uh, all our private tile on the properties flow into it and if this county tile comes up into about this point uh, and we have now as when this when these county tiles were put in in the early uh, 1900s uh, quite a little of this land in Wright County was pasture was in small grains now that everybody has went on and uh, went basically into corn soybean rotations. Uh, these farms uh, in a big rain become a lake. And so any damage to this county main or any of our tile, uh, because this land is flat, uh, we don't... Uh, uh, We, uh, drainage is a big issue, you see what I'm saying, to the productivity. Uh, farm number one here is sets about probably 10 foot higher. It takes water, this 160 takes water from no one. It sheds water off, predominantly to the west here. Uh, and uh, so that is one real concern I have in this issue is is drainage. Okay. And can you clarify how you think the pipeline would impact that drainage and the drain tile? Okay. 
anytime you disturb a existing tile line, you know, the field tile here it would is normally about five inches anytime so you've got a, a, a five inch diameter uh, now today plastic type tile and if anything settles you see what I'm saying all of a sudden you don't have a natural flow of water and uh, that's a concern I have here with uh, disturbing anything that's there and then trying to uh, correct it and uh, maintain it is a real problem. Uh, you mentioned that um, much of this tile is what you call county tile. So does that mean the county supervisors are the trustees of that drainage district? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, have the the county supervisors in your county uh, expressed any uh, opinions or any indication of what they're going to do in response to um, the possible impact of the drainage tile from the pipeline? To me, directly, no. But I know they they. They know the costs of maintaining that, and uh, any disturbance to it is going to have direct influence, uh, and there'll be a lot more uh, taxation levies put on to keep on maintaining in the future, you see, unless summit comes up and decides to foot the bill for it. Do you know whether your county supervisors have talked to any representatives from summit about the concerns regarding the, uh, the drain tile? I know they have very big concern about the summit pipeline crossing county roads you see, and the effect that uh, uh, what the county costs are going to be if this uh, permit is issued. Have you had any contacts with representatives of Summit about your concerns regarding the drainage? The uh, contact person that we had that approached us uh, is uh, J.D. Meyer from west of uh, Goldfield and he's a farmer there. Uh, I personally live on the southwest corner of Omaha, Nebraska. Myself and my neighbor are the first active farmsteads to the growth of Omaha coming out, uh, adding to us. And uh, he drove down three or four times, and he's familiar, you know, with uh, Wright County and Humboldt County. And uh, uh, we discussed those type of issues, you know, and his proposals for a uh, easement being granted to them, you see, rather than condemnation. Was this gentleman representing Summit? Is that yes? Okay. Yes, yes. He, he was Summit. I guess you would say field man. You know, uh, representative. Uh, you know, trying to uh, present their their proposals to us. Um, what kind of experience did you have with Summit's 
the land agents or their representatives. Uh, we had good rapport with Mr. Meyer. Uh, yeah, I had other phone calls, you know, later on with uh, some of the other representatives and uh, uh, basically at that point in time did not want to grant an easement and so it was a, a moot issue you see what I'm saying yeah. um, in your testimony you uh, went through in some detail your concerns about the easement without going through all of that um, uh, what was your general conversation with Mr. Meyer or any other representatives of Summit about the easement itself? I have never been, I have experience with easements uh, on our properties uh, near the growth of Omaha. And it went through condemnation. I've never seen one written so much in favor of a private corporation summit uh, to be taking uh, private property. Uh, My concern also is with the liability that we as landowners uh, would be accepting uh, where there's nothing in this condemnation to give us the uh, guarantee of In the uh, offers for signing an easement, the company had agreed to indemnify and hold the landowner harmless from and against any claim or liability or loss from personal injury or property damage resulting from or arising from the use of the easement by the company, its servants, agents, invitees, Accepting, however, such claimed liabilities or damages may be due to the cause of the acts of the landowner or its servants, agents, and invitees. Uh, there's none of that in this. There's nothing in this condemnation about future losses, what might happen uh, in the future, uh, who, who possibly would own this easement later on, uh, there's no protection to the owners of the land. Did the summit representatives um, indicate that um, maybe some of these provisions could be changed at your request? During the time of negotiations, yes. But when we come to condemnation there, it's just uh, the presentation for the condemnation is couldn't be written any more favorable to Summit than it has been presented. So then why didn't you sign an easement? Because I don't agree with this pipeline, number one. In your written testimony, um, you indicated that there are other options to capture carbon other than what is being proposed here. Can you clarify what you meant by that? Basically, the closest ethanol plant to our Nebraska farming operation is the Sire uh, Southwest Iowa Renewable Energy. 
and at this time they are capturing and selling off their carbon dioxide and uh, you'll notice that Sire uh, is not on the summit line coming from Shenandoah going north towards Sioux City that they made a decision not to be part of it at this point in time to my knowledge do you know what they're doing with their carbon dioxide Basically, they are capturing it, and they are tanker trucks come in and pick it up. You see what I'm saying? And I don't know. I, I would have to reach. I mean, I know the name of the company, but it doesn't come to the top of my head here right now that uh, they're capturing it and selling it off. You see, to make dry ice with whatever else you use carbon dioxide for. Thank you. That's all the questions I have, Ms. Grunhagen. Thank you. Mr. Leader, I'm over here, over your right shoulder. Okay, I see. Hi. Yeah, you can move, Go the ahead microphone and move that right. microphone. Mr. Leaders, Go ahead. Go ahead. Move that microphone around oh. so you don't have to lean around so okay, much. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead. Just the layout of the room is, is a little awkward at times. Um, my name is Chris Grunhagen, and I'm representing the Iowa Farm Bureau. And I have a few questions for you to clarify your, your testimony um, here today. Um, in, in the docket, it shows that you have filed uh, six attachments that uh, represent the Exhibit H's, the eminent domain requests. Is that correct? Do you recall the attachments that you filed with your testimony? Uh, basically, I filed a short form, and then, okay, I wanted to turn this issue over to the dominant Jordy law firm, but they came overloaded, I guess you'd say, and wouldn't take on new clients. And so then I was uh, setting out and uh, the dumb, I mean, the uh, Sierra Club helped me file those, you see what I'm saying, to get those filed for the deadline. And uh, we went through and uh, right at the top of my head, I can't recall each one. You see what I'm saying? Okay. You see, that was filed. I'm, f I'm familiar with what got filed. You are, you are familiar with what was filed? Yeah. Okay. And so the six exhibits or attachments that were filed, um, those are all your... Um, Summit's request for eminent domain for your properties. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm familiar with what you're saying. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Did, did you file anything other than this hearing exhibit today and those six um, attachments to your testimony? Uh, no, I did not. Okay. Um, your uh, testimony, I think, references 21 different exhibits. You, you did not have an opportunity to get those filed. Is that correct? I'm not sure what you're saying on the 21. Okay, that's okay. We'll move on. Okay. We'll just move on. Um, could the staff pull up um, the KMZ um, photo form or the map? Okay. So the hearing exhibit that you provided today shows four parcels. Um, the KMZ shows that someone is requesting eminent domain over six parcels um, that are outlined in, in red there. Are you aware of that? Yes. Okay. So the four that you outlined in Dayton Township, just to help orientate us, could you show us 
on this map where those four parcels are? One parcel is right here on farm number one, okay? And we have two parcels here on farm three. And then we have three parcels here because we are in this 40 acres. We catch a corner of this 40 acres right in here. And then we jump into this one. So I'm referring, you see what I'm saying? And so farm number two in your Dayton Township map is not, is above those and it is not being requested for eminent domain. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. And so just to cl clear the record here, on your Dayton Township map, number one would encompass uh, parcel number WR-023. Let me see here. So be the, the, it would be the parcel that is easternmost in that line. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then the next two parcels, WR024 and WR142, those two parcels are within number three on your township map. Is that correct? Would you like oh, to go back yeah. to the KMZ no, file? No, I've, I've got it right here. Okay. I've got it in order. Okay. 0546 is on number one. Yes. Okay. Uh, and that's the parcel number you're giving? Correct. Okay. 0548 and 0549 are on number three. And then... 0553 are on number four, going from the east side to the west. 0554, which give me 0552 is the center part of number four, the small uh, little corner. And 0550 is the, oh, excuse me, excuse me. Going from east to west, 0550 is the east portion of number four. 0552 is the center portion. And 0553 is the west portion of that line. Thank you. That's very helpful. So on your township map, portions of number one, farms one, three, and four are being requested for eminent domain. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And then on page three of your hearing exhibit, where you have the tile map. Yes. I'm sorry, of the hearing exhibit. Yeah. The tile map. Which yes. Which farm is this a tile map of? That's on what we call a number four, the West Farm. Okay. And so the northeast corner is not being requested for eminent domain of, of this um, map that you have drawn here but no, the rest of, but the rest of it is the line would come probably just estimating would come here and go on across here and in there now this area here has tile that was put in uh, prior to 1992 uh, when Dad had control of him, you know, was, was uh, managing this. And then we started to go back in through this original tile on this farm uh, was tiled just after 1900 with clay tile. And uh, it has either silted through 
uh, not effective, and so we started to uh, retile this farm. I got a certified wetland determination on this farm. It was about an acre that we could not get a uh, classification of a farmed wetland, so we had to stay out of the tile on that. And uh, then uh, since then, on farm number three, I have a certified determination on that so that we can go in and tile that whole farm if we want to. I do want to know more about that. We'll come back to that in a second because I want to finish with the map here first. Oh. And so the map represents the new t new tile that you've put in. Yes. But you have, but what I'm understanding you is there is already tile in there that's not shown on the map. As Correct. Well. Correct. Okay. Do you know approximately how deep the new tile is? We are limited to the depth of the tiling here on number four because of the original main lines. Uh, there is some of the, uh, on the map, some of these are different colored. Some is, is old tile here, you see what I'm saying, and uh, to where they find an outlet. It goes under the road and then starts over here. Because the train is is really pretty flat here, uh, we have limitations of what tile we can do. And then in the spring of 15, we were able to work more tile in this area. And then he did another up here, and I did not have a... Uh, map that I found. I found the uh, billing for it. And Mr. Lear, not to interrupt you, but could you describe in words, so you have tile in the southeast corner of this parcel? Is that what yes. you just said? Okay. Yes, and then there's tile in this area here. And that's like in the center of the parcel? Yes. Okay. And the lines that are not straight kind of in the central eastern part of the parcel are those private tiles or county tiles those are private tiles the only county tile on this farm is hmm. this is a uh, county tile that comes up through here and uh, goes into an inlet in the county uh, road ditch. You see what I think which was common when they built those and did it that way. And you're, you're pointing at the diagonal line in the northeast corner of the parcel? Correct. And that's Correct. a county tile? Yes. Okay, thank you. And then you also uh, testified a little bit earlier in the northwest corner, you, there is also tile there? Uh, kind of the area where there isn't lines? No, that needs to be retiled. But there is tile there already, but it's well, old tile? In, in the original tiling uh, done on farms in Wright County, they, uh, I have a map that shows tile there. Okay, whether it was installed or not, uh, I have an extensive tile map of this farm that was done. And uh, whether it actually got done way back in early 1900s, you see what I'm saying? Uh, and in those days, most of them tiled the worst spots. Uh, originally, when this land was broke up, uh, they farmed around those wet spots. And then when the immigrants from uh, northern Germany and uh, uh, countries there had dealt with tile, when they came in, they went to work at it and uh, formed the county districts. I mean, private 
uh, I guess you'd say, uh, either formed a district or did it jointly with neighbors uh, to build a, a main, and uh, then it went on from there. And I believe you also showed a little bit earlier here that the proposed pipeline route um, goes through the center of this parcel, um, but at a diagonal from northwest to southeast. Correct. Okay. Is there anything else I haven't covered on this map that we need to talk about? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so just a little bit ago, you mentioned you had a certified wetland determination done. Yes. Um, and that was by NRCS? Yes. Okay. And was it just this farm? No. Also, number farm number three was completed at a later time. Okay. And how long ago was that? Hmm. seven years ago I don't, I don't think it was more than ten and it was more than five and less than ten I would say very good and you identified that there were portions of this uh, parcel that were identified as a wetland they were identified as a farmed wetland a farm wetland we can repair and maintain the tile that originally is there. We can't increase the size. Uh, you can maintain it and try and keep it working. Uh, you don't go in and pattern tile right on through it. That's, you know, there's three classifications. Land is prior converted that was tiled and have indication of tile that was done. Uh, I guess you'd say probably uh, in the early 70s when we had new wetland regulations put Prior in. Prior to the 85 Farm Bill? Yeah, okay, the 1985 Farm Bill. You see what I'm saying? And if you, if you had tile in there and you went ahead and completed the paperwork, you were pretty well uh, good. Uh, go on with it or so and get a determination. And then we went through tremendous lawsuits and everything. You see what I'm saying? In the whole wetland jurisdiction, the whole thing got thrown out. You see what I'm saying? And then people tiled while there was, uh, until new rules came along and got defined. Everybody tiled as hard as they could you see, and then we're back under jurisdiction, and now we've got hopefully a better uh, law in the future that the U.S. Supreme Court has uh, 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 defined some of the definitions that EPA and that was using uh, that we probably would be able to, uh, they're not going to want to give up on it, we're going to have to still fight for it, but I think where we have this nexus and things like that to where now it's defined that it's actual flowing water between water bodies. So, so, so with the farmed wetland that's been designated by NRCS, um, if you were to pattern tile that farmed wetland, uh, what would happen with NRCS? Well, we would be... Uh, violation for the farm programs uh, so that's why uh, we tiled around the outside of it and we didn't go into it you see what I'm saying and uh, uh, and if you th that's you, a low depression that's a low depression to where water flows toward it and it actually more of the wetland uh, farm wetland is uh, on the neighbor adjoining farm to the other side of the fence. Do you see what I'm saying? So can you identify on the map where the farmed wetland is located? Uh, if you bring the map up a little bit, 
Yeah, the trapezoid shaped area here, it's about one acre if I remember right, you know, and you have to stay, I don't know, a certain number of feet away from it, you know, our Tyler from up in that area knows the limitations and then uh, you must have hooked it in right into the old tile that came around the the thinner lines or the old clay tile that go way back to when. And so um, on your page three of hearing your hearing exhibit, um, the trapezoid shape in the southeast corner, a little, little bit uh, to the west of that, but in the southeast corner, that's where the farm wetlands located? Yeah. Yes, it is inside of that. Uh, I guess I'd call it a trapezoid, or I don't know exactly what uh, is the correct it's a term for shape. it. So, but it's no, you know, it's probably half. You know, it's one acre inside of there, and I'd say that's probably two, two and a half acres. You know, that you have to stay away from them, and you do it. But from what you've identified as the proposed pipeline route, um, the the easement area would not intersect with that? Is that correct? Correct. correct. All right. And then you also mentioned you had a determination made on farm number three? Yes. As well? Were there any farmed wetlands on that property? No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, going to the, your file direct testimony on page 22. Um, you discuss some concerns with um, how your farm tenant is being treated in this process. Do you recall that? Let me make sure I have the right page. It's toward the bottom of that page. Yeah, I'm What's your familiar next? with it. I'm there familiar with it. Okay. Uh -huh. And you do have a farm tenant for all, all of these properties? Uh, three and four has the same tenant. The little corner of number one has a different tenant. And uh, as I, you know, observe what a... Uh, Summit came up with, okay, our tenants, the, the relationship of this farm and these farms that were put together, uh, Grandpa Thomas, or my great-grandpa Thomas came from Illinois just after 1890 and started, uh, I believe, with a half section, okay, uh, just to the south. There are 40 acres of this would have been part of the original farm. And he had three daughters and one son. And uh, my grandmother and her sister married brothers from Nebraska. The same day, the same ceremony on the farmstead. And then during the 1930s, Grandpa Thomas added on farms uh, two, three, and four, okay, in the 30s and put this together. And it's been held in the family. Uh, the farm that's not there uh, to the south went to uh, my grandmother's sister, who never married, and then she sold that farm off, you see what I'm saying, and uh, then uh, my dad and his brother and a cousin were the uh, next generation uh, from the other two sisters that went to Nebraska, and we maintained the property, you know, all along. The tenant 
on number one is a third generation farmer who started in the late 1930s on that farm and we've had the relationship for that long. The tenant that we have on farms three and four is the second generation and his dad started farming that right after World War II. And at that time they lived on those farms. We share rent these farms. We do not just cash rent and ask them to take all the liability in the issue. And uh, these are not long-term cash leases, you see, but those tenants do have rights. They're not being affected this year uh, because there's no actual damages going on. But any tenant that has multi-year leases have rights to that, and uh, the utilities board is not recognizing that. So you have two separate tenants for your six parcels? Correct. Okay. Um, Summit has identified one tenant for all the parcels. Did Correct. you provide them the names of your tenants? I did not. Okay. Would you be willing to provide the names of your farm tenants to them so that their rights can be respected? Yes. Okay. Um, do you want to, I mean, do you want to go ahead and identify them so that they can re receive notice and, and consideration? Well, I'd object. Um, this isn't relevant. Part of, I mean, he, he doesn't have the ability to give up their names if they don't want their names and identities known. Your Honor, the farm tenant's name is listed on the Exhibit H's already. It's already public information, as well as he talks about it in his testimony on page 22 and 23. So if the name's already known, there's no reason for him to be asked this question. He has identified there's two tenants. The Exhibit H's only have one. So we're trying to clarify. So same objection. Irrelevant. Mr. Leaders, you may identify them if you would like to, if you can and you would like to. I believe at this time it's not necessary. Okay, we'll go back and talk about uh, the crop damages. So you you say that you crop share your leases with them? Yes. Okay. And so you receive some of the income as well as pay some of the costs? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And so if there were damages paid for those crops, um, your farm tenant would get some and you would get some of that? I have discussed that with him now to be going forward. And if in fact this pipeline happens, uh, that we probably would change the lease over the area that Summit would be taking. You see what I'm saying? And until it was really restored uh, correctly, uh, that we as a landowner would be taking, you know, the uh, penalties from this, you see what I'm saying? And, the, and that area would be uh, not, you know, in a lease, you see what I'm saying? So if I understand you correctly, you would exclude the area of the pipeline easement from your farm lease? Yes, 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 yes. You and so do you have a year-to-year -year lease then with your tenants? Yes, basically, yes. Okay. 
Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Yeah, so thank you, Ms. Kaufman. Okay. Sorry. I had a question about you. You talked about your tenants' rights and um, your rights about within minute domain. And my question is simply um, do you think that um, this is a responsible, or, uh, not responsible, but a, a, a legitimate use? for eminent domain to take your land for this, what benefit do you as a member of the public expect to get from this, uh, from this, if they, if they can take it by eminent domain, how will that benefit you? It they, hasn't. It's taken a lot of my time, and I see no benefit from it. Thank you. Microphone there, Ms. Kaufman. Thank you, Mr. Jordy. Sir, sorry we weren't able to help you out in this matter. Um, I understand. Were, were you um, appreciative that there were folks here actually willing to help the landowners of this state, such as yourself, get ready for today? Yes, yes. How, how, how young of a gentleman are you? I'll be 79 in December. And I noticed that the entity that owns the ground is Lou Tomko. I take it your great-great-grandfather was the Tom of Lou Tomko? No, no, that's Louise Thomas Company. Okay. That's my grandmother. That's, oh, well, that's even better for Grandma. Okay. Um, and you're the fourth generation, and I, I take it you'd like to see this farm ground continued the way you want to do it legally within your rights for years to come? Yes. Do you believe there's any public necessity uh, for a private company to transport hazardous materials across your land and store it somewhere in North Dakota forever? Would you repeat your question, yeah, the first you, part of it? Yep. Do you believe there's any public necessity or public convenience for a private company to transport a hazardous material on, under, through, and across your land forever to store it somewhere in North Dakota forever. There is no public benefit. Now, the questions the Farm Bureau was asking you were assuming this project would um, be approved and, and approved in all the other states and all the lawsuits, some it's filed, that they'd win all those and that it would be built. Is it is it your testimony that you don't want any part of this uh, project? I would prefer not to. Okay. And if it were to be forced upon you against your will, your testimony is that you would actually take out of production the land that would be for the permanent easement uh, due to your concerns and liability and other uh, worries about it, correct? Let me define that. Until it was restored and would be good productive farmland again, I believe that we as a landowner uh, should shoulder that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then uh, maybe I can answer it a little bit differently. I have experience with pipelines, okay, uh, sanitary sewer lines coming through property, uh, and I know what it takes to try to get rid of the compaction. We, I've not been involved in Nebraska, you see, with drainage tile. Uh, you know, there was some old tile in that bottom, you see what I'm saying, but uh, anytime you'd have a the farms that we farm in Nebraska are all dry land farms in Sarpy County to the south of Omaha we have Marshall Lose type soils uh, deep soils that predominantly are well drained uh, we have I'm basically a no-tiller. I have fields that we have not done tillage on in over 30 years. 
okay? Uh, we're far enough south that our soils warm up. We are in, you know, uh, the best place to be. That soybean stubble out there is precious to us uh, for erosion control. Uh, we go through drought stress, or we have stresses, you know, normally every year is totally different than these farms up here in Wright County. I'd like to ship some of the extra water we have in Wright County to Sarpy County some years. And uh, so after you have all this compaction, and it'll happen, you know, with any type of pipeline installations, it uh, the results will not be favorable and then it can depending on the climate and the time of the year and how wet the soils are it can be from not being favorable to very very bad you see what I'm saying and uh, so that's where I'm coming from on this so so when you said at the beginning part of that answer that the landowner should shoulder that you're saying relative to your tenant you wouldn't want your tenant to have to uh, deal with the headaches of all the years and potentially decades of um, reduced yields correct yes unless there's some type of compensation uh, through this condemnation uh, which there really is none the way the uh, uh, petition is written you see it's a one time payment here that uh, the uh, appraisers would would give you see what I'm saying and uh, uh, it needs to be in this as, as awards you see and what future damage is there? Nothing in that that petition, you see, about anything further. But assuming Summit would make the statement statement that they or whoever they sell this to would uh, have to pay for future damages, so long as you can prove it and convince them that they were the cause of those damages, would that make you feel any better, knowing that you're going to have to shoulder the cost and expense of proving any loss to them uh, today with yield monitors on combines it'd be real easy to uh, come up with the documentation on that and that was one verbal offer that we were given you see what I'm saying uh, by Mr. Meyer as, as, we, as we you know he visited me a number of times you see what I'm saying sure uh, and and my question wasn't that it's easy for you to document what you feel is a loss. You understand you'd have to convince and get the permission of the of the company, and there's no one else looking over that process. Do you understand that? Correct. Correct. Right. And and um, has, has anything that you've heard throughout these proceedings of how they've treated other landowners and misled them make you feel comfortable that they'll do the right thing in the future? The way the condemnation, I believe I would call it a petition or lawsuit is, it was presented so much in their favor that I do you know, uh, totally written that way that I think you're uh, fooling yourself if you believe them. Thank you. I don't have anything further. Ms. Hyde. Just have one question. Just, do you have any further concerns about uh, Summit's proposed uh, project on your land? Oh, okay. Thank you. Excuse me. That's okay. Do you have any further uh, concerns about uh, Summit's proposed uh, project on your land you'd like to see? I 
don't believe that it will cut carbon. When this ethanol, if we sequester this carbon, uh, let me start differently. The crops we raise, corn and soybeans, love carbon dioxide. Why are we going to ship all over the Midwest and bury it in the ground? Okay. Our ethanol plants are going to receive benefits. Uh, through a shell game is what it is. Uh, so that the end users on the West Coast will supposedly uh, have benefits and it's all going to be subsidized by our federal government. The change of usage of the ethanol probably is not going to change. And all there's going to be is a whole bunch of money handed around. And I say if you want to go green, we'll give you a green bicycle. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about any carbon usage. You might need to have some type of methanol capture under the seat of that bicycle. But let's get right down to fact. This is a big green gimmick. Thank you, sir. Any other questions from parties? Mr. Leaders, thank you. Now is your opportunity to redirect yourself. Uh, so you've got a chance here to clarify um, any of your answers that you already give that were asked of you from the parties. Uh, does that make sense? Yes. Do you have, as a board, do you have any questions? No questions from us. No, we, okay. we read your pre-filed testimony. We listened today. Uh, so no questions right now. But if you need to clarify anything that was asked of you today now's the time to do that okay well number one to the board i commend you uh to hear my testimony to speak up just a little okay excuse okay. me no, you're good to start with i need to commend you as a board to hear my testimony here and to hear it as board members, uh, not just have this push, you know, this whole proceedings, I just go between, go before a, a, an uh, administrative judge or like that, that you are spending the time and you are listening. And I commend you for that, to hear, as, as a board, to hear this and to hear my views on this. Uh, I'm a fourth generation active farmer in Nebraska. This is fourth generation property we own. Uh, I care for the community in Wright County that I don't want uh, those that live near it uh, to be exposed to the carbon dangers. Uh, I have two sons, uh, both are engineering graduates and both work for Caterpillar. Royce has been there for 23, 20, about 23 years. Ivan was there in, in, in uh, 2016, a retiring farmer in the next county south was looking for someone 
to probably start taking over his operation. He started farming from Houston, Texas the first two years. And in 2018, uh, he came back to farm full time. He has some farms at Renwick in Humboldt County. My son Royce is with Caterpillar and he'll stay there till he retires, but he already has a farm in Sarpy County. Uh, this land goes, the appreciation of farms and farmland goes deep in our families. And uh, we need to protect it and to keep going. So, uh, I don't believe I need to redirect anything to you know to any of the um, um, opponents or uh, defendants here. I thank you for the time that you've been giving me to uh, make my presentation and to work with me. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good day.